Look at uh, particularly Genesis chapter 1. You know, creation is a big issue. And if you're a Christian, and if you believe God on this, uh, you need to have some answers. You need to have some, uh, some information. Now, I'm not going to give all you give all the information you need this morning, but uh, I, I can assure you it's all there. Uh, we've got God's Word. If, uh, if you have questions about this, there's a, a website called creation.com. Just about any question you can ask, they'll have an extensive answer uh, to it and a, and a good scriptural one. Uh, God created the world in, in six normal days, about 6,000 years ago. Now, there's not a lot of people that believe that, but that's what the Bible teaches. Um, I wanted to share, before we start in Genesis, just a couple of verses. I don't know if those are on the... I don't guess they got on the screen. Anybody back there at the sound booth? Did you get those verses on the screen? In Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 6. Um, let me just read them to you. Thou, even thou, art Lord alone. Thou hast made heaven the heaven of heavens with all their host, the earth and all things that are therein, the seas and all that is therein, and thou preservest them all. And the host of heaven worshipeth thee. Uh, you know, God has made everything that there is. Uh, Job uh, writes, or the book of Job tells us, He stretcheth out the north over the empty place, and hangeth the earth upon nothing. That's an amazing fact, isn't it? Hebrews 11 says, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. We live in an amazing world that God has made. And the, the thing that constantly amazes me when I think about it is we live in a world that's cursed by sin. Imagine what it would be like without that. Uh, there's, there's many views about origins. Two basic ones. Uh, God states his here. Let's read verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Probably most of you know that by heart. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Uh, that refutes atheism, where they say there is no God. God created. Uh, it refutes agnosticism. You know, there's a lot of people who say, oh, well, we, we just don't think you can know. God says, here's what happened. Uh, it refutes polytheism. There's those who claim there's many gods. Uh, listen, that doesn't work. Uh, the Bible says God. It refutes pantheism. That's the idea that nature is God. There's a lot of people who believe that nowadays, that matter is, is God. Uh, there's only one God, and He created the world. Uh, it refutes materialism, the idea that matter is eternal. You know, if you don't believe that God created, you have to believe something's eternal. And uh, God is the one who created. Uh, the verse we, we said, he, uh, he, the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. He didn't take something and make something else. He took nothing. <laughs> the Bible uses the word ex nihilo. It means out of nothing God created. Um, this verse refutes fatalism, that, that there's no plan, that things just, just happened. There's two basic views, evolution and, and creation. Um, I carry a, a card in my wallet. I don't often share it with, with people. I, I mean to leave it, but atheism. It's the definition of atheism. The belief that there was nothing, and nothing happened to nothing, and then nothing magically exploded for no reason, creating everything. And then a bunch of everything magically rearranged itself for no reason whatsoever into self-replicating bits, which turned into dinosaurs. Makes perfect sense. <laughs> Got a picture of a dinosaur on the front. Um, there's only two basic beliefs about where we came from. That we came from nothing by chance, or that God created the Bible teaches that, that God created. You know, the Bible gives us the true history of the universe. Uh, there's people who, who say, oh, well, what about civilizations on other planets? Genesis 3.20 tells us, Eve was the mother of all living. There's nobody out there except the children of Eve, and that's us. Uh, people say, well, what about Cain? Where did Cain get his wife? Well, Genesis 5 and verse 4 talks about Adam uh, begat Seth, and then he begat sons and daughters. Uh, Cain married a sister, a cousin, or uh, he married a close relative. And it wasn't until 2,000 years later that God gave the laws about different uh, areas of, of marriage there. Uh, 
Who was there? God was there. We ask the question, it's often asked, were you there? <laughs> no, we weren't, but there's a witness, and, and it's God. And as we look at Genesis chapter 1, he tells us about the days of creation. Now, this is not a scientific treatise this morning. I'm not trying to give you answers to every question that you'll ever have. But I want us to look at this chapter. Let's, let's take it day by day. Uh, Genesis 1, again, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. You see, in the first day, God creates the earth, space, time, light. And it's obvious here he's talking about a 24-hour day. Uh, the Hebrew confirms that because he says the evening and the morning. He's not talking about an age. The word day can be used in other places to talk about the, the day of whatever. Uh, but this is a 24-hour day. He talks about the evening and the morning. Some people say, well, how can we have light without the sun? Well, let me tell you, in uh, Revelation, it says when it comes to the end of things, we're going to have light without the sun. Uh, that's Revelation chapter 22, verse 5. You can, you can look at it where he talks about, The Lord giveth, giveth them light. There'll be no, uh, no candle that won't need the light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light. Uh, and that's the way it was at the beginning. I don't understand how all of these things work necessarily, but God created the light. Then on day 2, verse 6, and God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament, and the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Uh, it seems here that he's making the atmosphere. He's making uh, the air and the, and the water. Then in, in verse 9, we see day 3, And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place. Let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth. The gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good, and God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the, tree, uh, the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. We see God creating the dry land and plants. It's interesting to think about the different kinds of life that there is. You know, there's a difference between a living creature and a living soul. At this point, God hasn't made people yet, but he's making life. Uh, there's life. Uh, put it this way, Adam eating a carrot wasn't killing somebody <laughs> or something. Uh, he was doing what, exactly what God wanted him to do. Uh, different kinds of life that uh, God is beginning to create here. Day 4, verse 14, God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. It always makes me laugh how God just throws that in there. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. God makes the sun, moon, and stars. Amazing. You know, who hasn't stood outside of a night and thought, wow. You know, there's just no words to express it, is there? You know, we, we, have a, we know a man who's a Christian today because uh, he studied the stars and he thought, somebody's, somebody's behind this. <laughs> and when he heard the scripture, he said, that's, that's who's behind this. And he trusted Christ. Did you ever wonder where the week come from, comes from? It comes right from this first week. God set a pattern. Uh, France at one time, at, at, during the French Revolution or after, tried to have a metric week. A 10-day week didn't work. <laughs> uh, the pattern is seven days and a day of rest. Uh, the seasons, the months, the years, God set them in place. At uh, day five in verse 20, God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly 
the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales, and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let fowl multiply on the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. So God creates the, the sea creatures and the flying creatures. Interesting, he talks about he, he makes the, the whales. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, that's, that's right. Then uh, day six, verse 24. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creatures after his kind, cattle and creeping thing and uh, beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind and the cattle after their kind and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. To every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. The evening and the morning were the sixth day. So God describes uh, those six days of, of creation, uh, the land, animals, and man on the last day. You know, when people say, well, where did the dinosaurs come from? That's the day they came. Uh, it's exactly right. Uh, plants and animals after their kind. You know, the, the science doesn't use that expression, kind. Uh, they have a classification system. Uh, a man named Linnaeus set that up. He was a Christian. He was a, a Bible believer. He wasn't using it to try and say all these came one from another. He was just using it as a system to be able to study the ant plants and animals and, and so on. Uh, but you'll find that, that things uh, follow their kind. Uh, dogs always have dogs. Cats always have cats. People always have people. Uh, it's just the way it is. And uh, uh, it's not the same as a, a scientific classification. It's probably somewhere there between family and, and genus. Uh, if you know Homo sapien is a genus and species, uh, the one before that's the family. Uh, uh, there's things that can breed together but then they can't breed on. Uh, that's because it's, it stays to its kind. Well, uh, we see a lot here. Uh, it always makes me laugh how, how God has put in our heart to look after creation. And evolutionists just cannot get away from it. Have you ever noticed? You know, there's, there's things that evolutionists do that don't make any sense when you believe in evolution. And they do it because God's put it in our heart to look after his creation. It's just an amazing thing. You know, uh, I believe that God created. He created out of nothing. He created this earth. And he created everything. I want to just give you three basic things uh, this morning. Uh, we're not going to try and make an in-depth study of, of the chapter. There's, there's more there than, uh, than we could look at. But... Uh, I believe God created, number one, because I believe in God. Uh, creation shows us something about God. The psalmist said in Psalm 19, verse 1, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. You know, as you, as you look around you, uh, you see that we have a God who is beautiful. We have a God who understands beauty. You know, there's, there's no reason for many of the things that we see to be beautiful. It's not a function. You know, the world likes to try and make up stories. You know, evolution is, is a series of made-up stories. Uh, it's beautiful because the Creator's beautiful. And there's things that, uh, without really looking hard, you'll never see. And God still makes them beautiful. You, you look in the microscope. You look at the bottom of the ocean. You look in outer space. and It's just beautiful. And you see his power in it. Yeah, I sometimes think about this idea of uh, nuclear energy. 
You know, where they, uh, I don't understand it all, but somehow they get the energy out of the atom. You know, we used to talk about atom bomb and, and so on. That power, God put in there. And God holds it together. Uh, the psalmist wrote in Psalm 33, verse 6, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathereth the waters of the sea together as an heap. He layeth up the depth in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. That's our God. By his power, just by his word, these things came in, into existence. And you know, we, as we look at creation, we see order. Uh, the original scientists were basically Christians who were looking for what God had done. Uh, just about any area of science, the person who started that was a Christian. And they were looking for uh, the order uh, of God. God doesn't do anything haphazardly. You also see the, the, the wisdom of God. You know, there's, there's just so many things that have to work together. And there's just so many things that they're, they're, just, they're just right. You take our, our, our world. You're probably aware that the world is tilted. And if it wasn't, it, the, the North and South Pole wouldn't work. They would just keep piling up with more and more and more and more ice. Uh, if the sun gave off more heat, we'd bake. If the sun gave off less heat, uh, we would freeze. If the world wasn't revolving, if our earth wasn't revolving at just the speed it is, our days would be too long and too short, and things would die during the night, and things would cook during the day. Uh, God made it just right. If the moon were a little bit closer, the tides would cover the tallest mountains. It's an amazing thing, the way God has made it. If the oceans were deeper, uh, carbon dioxide and oxygen would be absorbed and, and plants couldn't exist. If the atmosphere were thinner, the meteorites that burn up now would be hitting us all the time. Most things contract when they freeze. You're probably aware of that. You know, if something gets stuck, you, you try and cool the inner thing and maybe you can jerk it out. Except water. Water expands when it freezes. God made it that way because he, he knew if the, if the lakes and things froze from the bottom up, the fish and those wouldn't be able to live. Uh, it, it's an amazing world that we live in. We see the wisdom of God. Uh, the very atheist who argues against an order, orderly universe still sets his watch, and he sets it by God's timing. Uh, we see the wisdom of God in creation, and it's sin that causes people to deny God. It's not a person's head that you have to argue with, it's their heart. And when their heart is changed, uh, their head will, will easily follow. Uh, we have order instead of chaos in our universe. We know that from a practical sense. Listen, your room does not clean itself up. <laughs> I mean, it just doesn't work that way. It takes a person uh, who has a plan and puts it into effect. We, we know these things within ourselves, and it's only because of sin that people would, would even think to deny that. Order requires someone to set things in order. The mind that rebels, I'm reading this, the mind which rebels against belief in God must believe that the complex and wonderfully ordered universe in which he finds himself came about all by itself, the result of no mind or plan like finding a fine Swiss watch formed by an explosion in a junkyard. Uh, it just goes against all logic. God's wisdom uh, shows us that there is a God. Uh, the wisdom of the universe shows us that there is a God. The psalmist wrote, The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. If you look at that portion in the King James Bible, the words there is are, are in italics. They're, they're added for the sense of it. You could actually read it, The fool hath said in his heart, no, God. You know, to say no to God, uh, it's like when Peter said, no, Lord. <laughs> you know, no, Lord, don't go together. Uh, God has spoken. And we need to understand that uh, there is a God. And the Bible tells us in Romans, uh, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. 
and their foolish heart was darkened. You see, it's when we turn, it's when we look to self rather than God that we deny the, the very logic of, of the universe. Uh, when we read there, uh, Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God. Uh, verse 3 says, there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Everywhere around the world, uh, people can know that there's a God. I believe in God. I believe God created. Secondly, uh, I believe God created because I believe the Bible. You might call that circular thinking, but uh, uh, the Bible's an amazing book. We talked about it some uh, a week or two ago. Uh, and we need to understand eternal truth is not discovered, it's revealed. What we know about God is, is not because we figured it out, it's because God told us. God has given us His Word. And if Genesis 1 and Genesis 1 through 11 are not true, what, what part of the Bible is? I really don't think you can call yourself a Christian and not believe the very beginning of what God has said. Now, I know that there's, there's a lot of things that fall into the, uh, the heading of Christian, but a Christian is one who believes the Lord. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Um, 2 Timothy 3, he says, All Scripture, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Now, that's Genesis 1 right through Revelation. What is it, 22 chapters in Revelation? Uh, somebody said, I believe it from cover to cover, and I even believe the cover. <laughs> it's the Holy Bible. Uh, it's God's Word. And uh, we need to understand it's, it's true about prophecy. Yeah, what an amazing thing that God would tell us ahead of time some of these things are going to happen. Hundreds of things about the coming of Christ. Uh, it's true about history. It's not like some of these religious books where they just make things up. Uh, archaeology always confirms Scripture. Uh, it's true about wisdom. Listen, you're, uh, you're headed the wrong direction if you think your wisdom is, is better than what God will tell you. Find out what, what God says. In fact, he says in James, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. And he'll, he'll help you. And it's, it's true about Christ and salvation. And if you want to know about salvation, the place to go is, is to the Lord. Uh, John chapter 20 and verse 31. Get there. He writes this. These are written... The verse before, he says, there, there's many other signs that Jesus did which are not in this book. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. God hasn't recorded everything. But he says, I've recorded everything you need to know. I've recorded everything you need to know about Christ. Uh, I believe the Bible. I believe the Bible is God's word. And, and you know, when we... When we understand that there is a God and that God has spoken, that should cause us to bow down and worship Him. He's awesome. Isn't it interesting how the world and the devil like to lower the value of words? The word awesome is used regularly. You know, oh, I had an ice cream. It was, it was awesome. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It might have been good, but it's not awesome. God is awesome. Well, let me put it this way. If you're awed at a cup of ice cream, get a life. <laughs> uh, Psalm 95 and verse 6, he says, Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Our Maker. That's who He is. And when we understand that God is the Creator, it should cause us to warn others. Psalm 96, he says, the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. If you read the rest of Scripture, you'll see there are no other gods, but there's, there's things that people say, oh, with this God or that God, and boy, it's, it's based on fear, isn't it? But you need to feel, fear the real God, the one who made you. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord, O ye kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. So he's the creator. He's the one who made us, not we ourselves. And we're going to give an account to our creator someday. We're going to stand before him. Uh, I believe the Bible. I believe in God. 
Uh, I believe that God created. You know, a third reason I believe that, uh, that God created is because I've seen faith in Jesus Christ change people. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, he says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And I've noticed evolution does not give people hope. Evolution does not give people forgiveness. It's based on survival of the fittest. Do you understand that concept? That if it's between you and someone else, their job is to kill you? I mean, that's exactly what it is. And <coughs> there's such hypocrisy in the world today. There's things happen that fit exactly with the theory of evolution, and people are upset. Well, all these people were killed. Well, survival of the fittest. Why should we waste our sympathy if we actually believe in evolution? The reason we have sympathy is because within us, within everyone, is just that those things that God has put there, a conscience, a, a soul, a relationship with God. We're different than a carrot. We're different than a chair. We're made in the image of God. And even the evolutionists can't get away from it. it it's interesting to hear them talk because quite often they'll slip up and use the word design. This is, re this is really uh, uh, nice. <laughs> they, can't, they can't use words that make sense sometimes. Because only God makes sense. Um, God changes people. You've seen it. Uh, we have a friend who, when, as a young man, he was a, he was a terror. <laughs> he ended up with tattoos all over him. And, and most of them are homemade ones, which are, you, you know, they're, they're not that great. Uh, but then he got saved. The, the kids started going to Sunday school, and he didn't realize it. You know, he, he got hooked. God changed his heart. He didn't change his skin. He still got tattoos. Young people, let me warn you, when you get older, your tattoos sag too. All right? <laughs> uh, tattoos are the devil's graffiti. Anyway. But God changed his heart. And, you know, he might look scary. Man, he loves the Lord and he loves people. God made him a preacher. And most of the time, the only tattoos you'll see are the ones on his hands. And, uh, you know, people come into church and they, they see that, oh, they feel, oh, well, if he, can, if he can come in, I can come in. And it's true. God changed his heart. Uh, we had an a elderly, seemed like an elderly man at the time, probably about my age, maybe a little older. I, I met him because uh, I used to visit his mother-in-law. He was very elderly uh, in the nursing home every week. And when she died, I, I did her funeral. And I always preach the gospel at a funeral, and, and he thought the polite thing to do would be to visit our church. Well, he didn't know, but God hooked him, and he got saved. Well, he had a reputation of being an angry, aggressive man, but God changed him. And in the senior group that he went to, people saw a change, and quite a few people came along to church. Some got saved because God changed him. It, scripturally, a great example is the Apostle Paul. Can you imagine having Saul chasing you around trying to kill you? And then you hear, he's become a Christian. Yeah. He's coming to church. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what a change. You know, going from killing Christians to being a Christian and to preaching the word of God. Listen, God changes people. It makes a difference. Uh, the Bible says, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Jesus Christ, the Bible says, is the only way to God. Jesus said in John 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I gave someone a ride yesterday, and he was telling me about a, a situation where he'd helped somebody who could have gotten hit by a car. And I said, well, if, if you'd you know, gotten in the way there and got hit by that car, would, would you have gone to heaven or hell, or, or do you know? His answer was, well, that was a good deed, so I probably would have gone to heaven. <laughs> I said, well, you know, the Bible says we're all sinners, and there's not enough good deeds we can do to, to make our way to heaven. You see, it's not by works of righteousness that we go to heaven. It's not by being good. That's religion. We talked about that in Sunday school. There's two religions in the world, works and grace. Grace is what God has given. And the grace is paid for by Christ. 
The reason it's free is because Christ paid the price. Uh, faith is, is believing in God. Romans 10, 13 says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I would ask you this morning, uh, what is your faith in? Who is your faith in? Uh, let me read this, this example before I quit. Some of you probably heard of Fred Hoyle. He's a well-known scientist. Uh, he said, there's an impulse to ask where originated material comes from. Such a question is entirely mean, meaningless within the terms of reference of science. What he's saying is, science can't tell you where we came from. He said, as to, the law, as to why the laws of physics are what they are, he said, we must not go on to ask why. <laughs> science can't tell you why we're here. Science can't answer the main questions of life. Who am I? Why am I here? Where am I going? God answers all those questions. The Bible says you're here for the glory of God. You know, God created us knowing Adam would sin. You know, when, when God was saying, Adam, where art thou? It's, you remember when your kids were little? Where's Alex? Where's the baby? Well, you know where they are. Of course you know where they are. Oh, and they're laughing. Well, Adam was, and Eve weren't laughing. God knew where they were. But he wanted them to say, here I am. And God knows you. God knows your every thought. He, he knows, he, the Bible says he knows the hairs in your head. He designed you. You're, you're what he wants. But he wants you to know him. That's why he made us, so we could have fellowship with him. Um, you know, when, when Jesus was about to be born, the angel said, Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Jesus, calling himself the Son of Man in Luke, said, The Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. God created us, and God also provided himself a lamb, the Redeemer. God's remedy, uh, I don't think you can understand the Bible or life if you don't understand and believe Genesis chapter 3. Now, you need to know God created, but you also need to know man has sinned, and the wages of sin is death. Genesis chapter 3 explains that very, very clearly. Well, God made a remedy in Jesus Christ. God made us knowing he would have to be that remedy. And he willingly did that because he loves us. He knows you by name. He knows you as a person. And he wants you to have a, a lovely, eternal relationship with him. It starts, Jesus said, with being born again. You must be born again. And I would encourage you this morning. And listen, without Jesus, you're lost. Can you imagine being treated the way God is, is treated? You know, if you had done some, something that you were just so pleased with and proud of and somebody looked at it, spit on it and kicked it and said, oh, you know, t time and chance. Or if you did something wonderful for someone and they despised you for it. The Bible says that uh, Jesus was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. You know, his heritage physically was through, the, through Israel. He came, and they said, we don't want him, crucify him. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. God made you to know him. And by faith, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, by believing God's word, you can know him. You can have a changed life. You can have eternal life. That's what it's all about. God wants you to have fellowship with him. The Bible says without Jesus, we're lost. As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And if you don't know Christ as your Savior this morning, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. And this would be a good day to get saved. You've got no guarantee of tomorrow. If you know Christ as your Savior, listen, live by faith. Keep growing in, in God's Word. Keep trusting Him. Uh, use the opportunities you have with, with others about creation to, to grow yourself and to, to be a blessing to them. Uh, do you know Him? Will you believe Him? Now, let's go to Him in, in prayer this morning with our heads bowed and in an attitude of prayer. Uh, maybe the Lord is speaking to your heart about this area. Uh, maybe you need to be saved. Uh, maybe you're a professing Christian, but you've been doubting God's creation and uh, God's work in, in the world. Now, whatever your need might be, God can help you today. Father, we are so grateful that you love us. 
Lord, that we're the work of your hands. Uh, Father, that you're pleased, you would be pleased to be called our, our Father. And uh, Lord, I pray if there are those here this morning that are not saved, that, uh, that they would humble themselves and, uh, Lord, repent of their sin, turn from their sin to you and ask for your, your forgiveness and your salvation. God, help us as individuals, as families, as a church, help us as a community to turn to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.